Hello and welcome to Monkeys with Fire. How is everybody this afternoon? I hope you're all well. Hope you've uh, you've started your weekend in style, and uh, you're here to join me uh, for a game, a Saturday afternoon game. Good afternoon, Chris. Welcome, welcome. Just want to check that you can hear me fine. Can see everything fine. Just to make sure that nothing has altered since we last spoke. <laughs> you can hear me. Okay, that's good. Let me just bring that to there. Only see the splash screen. All right. Well, let's uh, let's introduce the game that we shall be playing this afternoon then. Okay, and so we shall be playing Anno Domini 1666 from Wargamer, Wargamer Games Studio. Let's get that correct. So let's, uh, let's do the introduction. The year 1666 Europe. After the sudden and airless death of Emperor Leopold I, the throne of the mighty Habsburg dynasty is empty. Electors of the Holy Roman Empire make their way to Vienna to choose the new monarch. European powers dispatch their envoys to Vienna to make sure that the candidate they support wins. They will also send their best and most trusted men for tasks which can't be officially done by politicians. Anno Domini 1666 is a swashbuckling board game of intrigue and mystery set in an alternate reality of 17th century Europe. Take command of a band of rogues and heroes, represented by highly detailed miniatures, and face your opponents in dynamic and challenging scenarios. Explore the dark alleys of Vienna. Fight using amazing fencing skills and dirty tricks. Negotiate, convince, intimidate. Hire mercenaries and buy equipment. Pray for God's help or pact with demons. Do not let the city guard catch you. Never surrender. So there we go. Exciting stuff. I have been uh, reading the rules uh, yesterday. So a bit of a caveat before we get started. This is not going to be a how to learn how to play Anno Domini 1666, nor is it going to be a perfect play of the game. <laughs> Uh, I am literally going to be learning how to play this game live with you. Uh, so I'll be referring to the rule book, and uh, I'll be sort of fumbling my way through a little bit. But that's what we're all like on those first initial plays. And hopefully, during the course of this stream, you'll get to learn the game at the same time that I do as well. But I, I've already had a good look through, and there are definitely some aspects of this game that I think are very, very neat. I can't wait, so I will, I will highlight those as, uh, as they come into play. All right, shall we go to the table? All right, so we've got everything set out in front of us. Uh, where do I start? Because uh, miniature games typically have a fair number of rules uh, involved in them. Uh, you can play this as an individual scenario or part of a campaign, a greater sort of narrative. Uh, there are several player boards uh, depicting the alternate reality uh, Vienna. Uh, I got to say right off the bat the artwork on all of the locations is absolutely fantastic. It's beautiful. It is so so detailed. Really really nice. So we are in what is actually a harbour area uh, but I'm, we're just using this small area. So it basically it's a I guess a 12 by 12 board just here uh, and this depicts an inn and some little buildings and some alleyways just around it. And that's all we're doing. Uh, it's a small band of musketeers, 
uh, up against, uh, I've got to get this right now. So let me get these. So we have, we have a handy sheet here. So this is the Royal Mus Musketeers up against the Defenders of the Crown, who are a group of Polish, um, well, her heroes and uh, what they call commoners. It's interesting. There's a there's definitely there's your your hero character and then your rank and file uh, soldiers, but also you can enlist sort of average sort of commoners. So there are some folks and there are some street urchins. Uh, there, there's even a courtesan <laughs> to be found in the game, which I thought was quite neat. So, uh, so it, it really does uh, transport you to the 17th century it, it, in, in every little aspect. I mean, the card art is beautiful. Uh, the, the miniatures are absolutely lovely. And you can uh, get either plastic board game miniatures, which is what I have here, or you can pay a little bit extra and you can go for the really high quality uh, metal miniatures. Uh, if you are a miniature painter, you know, those might be the ones you want to uh, to consider because the detail is just so, so lovely. They are multi-part as well, so that's kind of the difference. As a board, board gaming miniatures, you can start playing as soon as you open up the box. The metal miniatures, yeah, you've got to spend a little bit of time putting them together um, before you can play. So that's a consideration. All right, so we are going to be playing the first adventure scenario murder in the tavern uh and just so i mean it's clear the um the royal musketeers have the blue base uh can can't call it a base topper base bottoms do we call them base bottoms uh whereas the defenders of the crown have the red so the actual scenario uh, speaks of them as the blue band and the red band. So well, but we'll, we'll, use, we'll use their actual names. So the musketeers arrive at Zer Nixie, uh, which is the mermaid tavern. The owner was supposed to have an important letter for them. By the time they arrive, he's already dead. Suddenly the door opens and one of the defenders of the crown bursts in. Fighting erupts. So, that's where we are. Uh, we have the infamous D'Artagnan, who has the letter. He's obviously uh, taking it from uh, the innkeeper. And, uh, and we need to get that letter out of the tavern. It must obviously contain important information that's vital to this upcoming election. Uh, but stopping us, we have... The red team, the, the Polish team, the defenders of the crown, that have names that are going to cause problems. <laughs> there's only what there's only I can I can do the foot soldiers and I can do the main my sort of main guy who is let's just pick him up here and uh, bring him to the screen. So it is uh, Longinus. So I can say his name. He's okay, but. This gentleman, ah, oh. Skrets, Skret. This is we got an S K R Z. Oh my goodness, Skrets Tuski, Tuski. I can get the Tuski bit right. Skrets Tuski. I I am so sorry for any for anybody for anybody who uh, is Polish watching this. I do apologize. Uh, Wal Walodzjodzki. Wal Wal. No, we'll call him. Yeah, Wal. He's Wal. From now on, I, I'm afraid I just cannot do those names. Uh, D'Artagnan, infamous. He's not just famous. Oh yeah, D'Artagnan is. He's more than famous. Absolutely. He's like the most famous of the musketeers. He is beyond fame. 
for for his for his skill with uh with the rapier because all of the weapons that the uh the characters have are all appropriate to the time and there's some really nice um weapons to be seen so the musketeers have rapiers porthos who is with d'artagnan they obviously uh they were the ones who headed to the tavern first he has a cavalry pistol the their backup which are just two ordinary king's musketeers um have a walloon sword and a musket but then we come over to the defenders of the crown and they have a whole variety of different weapons they have half muskets and soldier swords cavalry pistols um a hussar cutlass and longinus is my goodness Essentially, it's a double-handed sword he's carrying. Um, so that's a Zerwick Aptur, Aptur, Zerwick Aptur. Hopefully I'm doing that right. He's going to do some serious damage. I will try and explain when we get to some sword fighting what these uh, indicators are on the side. Because this is one of the aspects that I really, really like about this game right off the start. So... Let's put that there. So, the board is set up. We have D'Artagnan, we have Porthos, we have our two musketeers. We have Longinus here with two dragoon, sort of rank and file soldiers. And then the other two hero characters are just on either side, just there. We, we, these are doors, hopefully you can see these clear enough. There are windows which of course you can shoot through or you can climb through, which I thought was quite neat. Uh, there are also some tables because it is a tavern. Maybe we were just sat down having a, a quiet pint before uh, everything kicked off. Uh, and you can leap over tables, which is quite cool. I like the, the as I say, the, the swashbuckling aspect of the game. So the wind conditions, uh, the game ends after you've discarded the last alarm counter. So we have these counters down at the bottom here. There are 12 of them. And let's get this correct. This is important. So we take away an alarm counter. Uh, when any, some, whenever somebody fires a shot, or whenever a character dies, or whenever a character flees, due to a failed morale check and at the end of each round so once all characters have activated we then move on to a new round we'll go through the turn order in a bit so the main ones really is if you fire your musket if you kill somebody and at the turn round that is going to take away one of these tokens so, of course, these are tokens that essentially are calling the, the, the city guard. And uh, so maybe we want to kill everybody quietly. <laughs> maybe we don't want to use any weapons, but, uh, oh, sorry, uh, firearms. But, but we want to do it because we want to learn how to, how to actually uh, use them. So, win conditions. Uh, so the game will end once the the last alarm token is removed. And then we calculate the victory points. So for each dead commoner, uh, commoner is the term for basically rank and file. So the soldiers, the musketeers, uh, as in the, just the standard guys. So you get one victory point for each uh, kill. For each dead hero, it's two victory points. So D'Artagnan, Porthos, Longinus, and the other two guys. Um, if one of the characters has left the game board with the letter as I say the letter is important it has vital information for us we need to make sure that uh, we can get that away uh, D'Artagnan currently has the letter that's an interesting thing I haven't checked whether I can actually pass the letter on Maybe you can. All right. 
Um, ah, but if one of your characters has the letter at the end of the game but hasn't left the board, that's worth two victory points. And then it's the player with the most victory points is the winner. In case of a tie, the player in possession of the letter wins. Uh, if the letter is on the ground, then the game is a tie. The letter could be on the ground because the person who was carrying it is killed and they just drop uh, what they have. So the red player, the defenders of the crown, they go first. They have the initiative. Uh, the game ends after you discard all 12 alarms. Yep. And each player draws two cards during each card phase. Uh, phase sorry. Uh, this is an interesting aspect to the game. Certainly I uh, welcome it. There are no dice in this game. It is all dealt with a, uh, a deck of cards, uh, which have some interesting suits, and you'll see how they come into play. Let's just uh, give those a bit of a shuffle, just because I, uh, I saw a couple of cards in there. All right. So, yes, no dice. I am very thankful. This game was tailor-made for me. Yes, yes, most definitely. Most definitely. So... I think we can start, and what we'll do is we'll we'll fumble our way through. We'll go through the turn order. We'll explore uh, the what possibilities can be done in in each given sort of phase, and we'll build up speed as we play, as we become more accustomed to it. But as I say, it's the red player who's going to get to go first. They have the initiative. Uh, Cutlass. Is it Cutlass? No, it's not. Is it Cutrass? Cut, Cutrass. Or maybe it's a Sabre. Initiative Sabre. That, that's a cool one. I mean, I don't know any other games that have an Initiative Sabre. That's, that's definitely a point. So, start of the turn. Uh, if a player receives additional models, no, we don't do that. We would typically refresh all of the characters if they've been used, but of course, in this first turn, we don't need to do that. So we go to the card phase. Each player draws a number of cards indicated by the scenario. After the draw, if you have more than seven cards in your hand, choose and discard down to seven. If you discard an eight or a joker, this may trigger a reshuffle. Okay, uh, but this step is skipped on the first turn, so I'm going to draw my two cards. And I'm going to draw your two cards. I'm going to let you see your two cards. Who's who? I'm effectively going to be playing, and um, well, first of all, welcome Baron, thank you for, uh, for dropping by. Uh, I'll be playing as the blue team, which is the Royal Musketeers, and chat. You will be playing as the red team. Okay, we're going to turn that down a bit. And uh, yes, okay, so you got me on that one. Whenever I mention any character or any name apart from Alexander Dumas, then exclamation all, all for one is the command. But it's not going to be happening, uh, you know, as regularly as, uh, as you might hope. Hopefully. <laughs> all right. So what cards do you have? You have got a four of chalices and a four of hearts. All right, that is your starting hand. That's actually pretty good to have two cards that have the same value. And I'll explain as we, uh, as we get to a situation why that's of value. I'm going to just put those there. So 
we know that they are there. I'm going to take a look at which ones mine are. Okay. Right, so we have our first two cards. So we then go to initiative phase. So determine initiative, both plays. Well, we don't have to determine the initiative phase uh, in this instance because it is already said that the red player has initiative. So, so we kind of skip that. But typically, we would use our cards to basically determine initiative. But we'll come to that in the next round. All right, we are on the action phase. So during the action phase, players alternate activating their characters to move, shoot, or prefer, perform other actions. But this does not include close combat. So what actions can we do? Uh, first of all, there are full actions or partial actions. And you either can do one full action or you can do two partial actions. So let's go through this. Full actions. A full move. Each character gets four movement points. And moving in the game is typically orthogonal. So horizontal and vertical. There are, however, some characters who are light of foot who are able to do diagonal movement. But they are only able to do it depending on the value that they have on their card. Let's uh, let's show you D'Artagnan's card. Oh. Okay, so there he is. He has some attributes there. Uh, he has... Let me just go to the... So I say it all correctly. I am going to be referring to this book quite often. So he has strength agility and fortitude along the right hand side strength agility fortitude and his agility is two and that means he can make two diagonal movements during i don't think it's in addition it's during his actual actual movement so his movement or is it Oh, that's a good. Uh, that's a good question. See, I, see, I'm, I'm automatically getting questions. Let me just double check. Uh, at least the, the rule book has lots of examples, which is good. So one, two, three, four. Right. Yes. So what you can actually do is your movement is still always four but you're able to substitute some of those movements as as opposed to being orthogonal up to the number that you have so he's able to do two none of the other characters in in the blue team are able to do diagonal coming over to the red team the only person who is able to do diagonal is we're going to call him wolo over there and I've got to check make sure I get the right miniature for him so he's the one with the sort of so here he is just there he can do one diagonal movement within his four all right so it's important to know this guy who is through the chat he can do diagonals all right he's the only one who can this is the only person who can do diagonals for my team. Uh, all right, so we've done, we've talked about movement. Uh, you're able to do a sprint, and a sprint includes a an agility test. Now, agility again. D'Artagnan has agility. Uh, Everybody else still has agility, but D'Artagnan has a plus two, and Wolo has a plus one. Everybody else is at a zero, so they don't have any modifier. So we need to talk about how you do a test. Uh, so basically what you do is this is what we call an unopposed test. You end up drawing the top card from your deck. You apply a modifier, depending on the actual character, 
So in fact, let's 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 do this as an example. Let's say that D'Artagnan wants to do a sprint. There is a difficulty of five. So here we go. We know it's the difficulty. He's got to get five or more. We're going to play a card from the deck. So we have a four. That's actually a good start if it's D'Artagnan. But because his modifier is a plus two, so we now have a result of six. And then what you're able to do, and I spoke about this before with your cards, is you're able to reinforce the cards from your hand. So if you have a matching suit, that would add plus one to the score. If you have a matching value, that is plus two. So I could look at my cards, and in fact, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you. So my two cards that I have just here, that's what I have drawn of my hand. Well, look at that. I actually have a matching suit. So I get a plus one on this particular test. So already we've got a four, we've got plus two, we've got plus one, we've got a result of seven. And the difficulty was five. Now, if you fail, If you actually failed the test, hence less than five, then it's a misfortune and you fall prone. If you had only one point extra, then it counts as a failure, but you're able to move one extra movement point. Right? So you do four, you're able to move five. If you're two extra, this counts as a success, and you're able to do two extra movements. And if you add three extra, then this is a triumph, and you're able to move three extra. I think I'm right in that. That's just me. But sprinting does have. rules to it and the rule of sprinting let me just make sure i'm correct on this where's a sprint is that you must have a line of sight to the place that you are trying to run from and to the place that you're going to let's just double check here sprinty 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 Where's the sprints? That's basic movement. I am definitely going to be referring to the, uh, the rule book a fair amount. The good thing about it, the rule book is is good. It is laid out in a very logical sense, which is helpful. Sprint, here we go. So during a sprint action, all the spaces the character moves to must have line of sight to the character's original space. You may not enter the same space more than once during a single sprint action. The character receives the usual four movement points to begin the movement. After spending the four and observing the above requirement, we do the check. Uh, misfortune, the character stays on the last space and moves to uh, falling prone. So you get to do your normal movement, and then this is the additional that you're able to do. Uh, on a failure, the character may spend one extra movement point. On a pass, they spend two, and on a triumph, they spend three. Uh, these extra points must be spent complying with the line of sight requirement. So, line of sight, how's that done? So long as you are able to see, so let's, let's say, now D'Artagnan here, he has an obstacle here, because it has an X on it. 
So he can see past this corner. Uh, so he can see into this square here, but of course he can't see into this square or this square because it obscures his line of sight. So if he was to sprint, he could go one, two, three, four. But remember, he's able to uh, go diagonal, so he could go four. And say he was successful, he could continue sprinting, but he's remember, he's got to be able to see his original starting point. So in effect, he could only go into areas around here. He couldn't come here because he no longer can see his original point. So that's quite important. But let's uh, let's tuck that away. I'm going to end up explaining all the rules, aren't I, before we even start playing, but I guess that's kind of the nature. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let you guys tell me stuff that you want to do, and I will just then try and translate it with the rules so at least the game starts going. So but we, you need to know what you got to do, what you're able to do. So we can do sprinting, reloading. So when you fire a weapon, there is an action required. It's a full action to basically reload. And typically, all of the weapons that we have here uh, require two reload actions. So it's, it's basically just a pause, isn't it? Um, you can do an aimed shot. You can do a defensive shot with a one-handed weapon which has a minus penalty, and if you've been knocked unconscious, you're able to wake up. Uh, partial actions, remember you, you can do two of these during the, the common actions uh, phase, is you can do a partial move, which is just two movement points. You can do a quick shot, which uh, gives you a minus one penalty to your shot. You can stand up if you were prone, or you can try to force a door open which is a, uh, a strength test. So again, we just explained how the tests work. We're going to draw a card. We're going to add any multiplier. You can then reinforce with your cards to basically see if you can do it. Uh, those essentially are the actions. So, over to chat. What do you want to do first? You have opened up this door, here is your hero, here are your two ordinary soldiers, you have two heroes over here. D'Artagnan has the letter. Uh, if you're able to get that letter and take it off the board, that's an extra five points. You're going to receive one point for killing the two ordinary soldiers. You'll receive two points for killing the heroes. Do you have any suggestions or shall I? Where are the exits? Uh, the exit is off the board. So once you come out of the building, coming off the board, so, uh, oh, well, actually, actually, you can't go this way because there is a solid line. So here is an exit. Here is an exit. Anywhere along here, here is all an exit. And of course, you can't go, and up this little bit here, you can't go past that line. So yes. There's a solid line here. This is actually looks like a palisade. It looks like a, a fence all the way along this area. Th th this innkeeper really needed to, uh, you know, re design his his tavern just a little bit better. Uh, the door, the door is open, Baron. So this door has already. The door was here. The door is already open. So you can go on in. Uh, think of line of sight in a sort of typical uh, game. Uh, he, so Longinus, does have a cavalry pistol. And let me just double check what the range is on that. So. 
So combat, ranged combat, where's the weapon? Nope, looked at the wrong side. Where's range? Range, range, range. G. So the range for your pistol is seven, and it is armor piercing. The range for your, and that's short range. Uh, range for your muskets is seven or fourteen. That's quite a distance, isn't it? Obviously, I think everything here is going to be all short range, isn't it? given the, the size of the area that we are within. Remember, of course, firing your, uh, your pistol does speed the game along. It al starts alerting people. So from the door, can we get... So from this door, yes, he could shoot. And because he's actually not through the door, he can only shoot it in essentially a straight line. Let me just double check, make sure that's correct. So actually, I don't think he can... I don't think he can hit anybody at this moment in time. Oh, no, he can, he can go diagonal. So from here... Oh gosh, he he could he could hit Porthos. He could give it a go. Oopsie. Where's where's shooting? There now the shot is going over a table. Right? So that would mean there is a minus there's a penalty to that shot, but we could, we could give it a go. Should we try? Because we, we are learning, aren't we? Yeah? So he's open, He's bashed open the door, and he's going to draw out his pistol, and pretty much he's taking a shot. All right, let's, let's give this a go. So this is the action phase. So... This is Longinus. He's going to use his cavalry pistol. Uh, the range is less than seven. One, two, three. So that's absolutely fine. Let's look at ranged combat. All right. So line of sight is fine. Uh, if the target is engaged, no. So if the shot crosses one or two obstacle boundaries, there is a minus one penalty. But line of sight is blocked if it crosses three or more. So that's worth knowing. So we've got a minus one on your shot already. All right, let's see how, how it does. So shooting. So make an unopposed test of the appropriate shooting skill with the DL indicated by the weapon at the given range. So I'm just going to take a look at this. And so I'm going to say, yes, we've got a range of seven, and it's got a, a, a test of five. Let's just make sure I'm correct. So make an unopposed test, which is what we're just doing here. Yep. Modifiers, minus one if shot crosses obstacles, crosses bird, shooter is prone, plus one if the target is prone, is not. Minus one if a quick shot, defensive, no. 
success is so does he have a plus on his right so he doesn't have a plus for shooting so it is literally going to be we reveal a card I'm going to bring this up on the board so we can see so reveal the card you have oh my goodness so you have a six a six of hearts so you've already succeeded now so success is damage equal to the weapon's value at the given location so you drew a heart this is where this, this works out this is this is quite cool depend the first card you draw kind of determines what area of the body you shoot at and this is shown on the side of the weapon and you have skulls that represent head heart represents i suppose the, the middle part of of your body what does what does the what does the cup represent? Let me just look here because I know that the the horseshoe represents your legs. Let me just uh... so you actually target uh, various elements of the person's body, which is cool. I just need to find where it is. Do, 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 do. Can't believe you're gonna. Where is it? There is a little bit that says what the chalice is. I'm trying to find the appropriate section. So I definitely know that the, the skull is head and the horseshoe is legs. But what is the chalice? Ah, here we go. Is that it? Uh, it's a cup. Chalice cup, it's the same thing. Yes, well this is it. The boat so the boat so you did a a six, you could effectively play your four, and that bonus, because it's the same suit, would give you a plus two, wouldn't it? Oh no, sorry, there's a plus a plus one matching matching suit. So you'd be up to a value of seven. But I'm just uh So we got all of that. So you've definitely succeeded. If the test succeeds, the target is hit. The original played card suits determine the hit location, which in turn determines the basic damage. If you achieve a triumph in the test, so, so a triumph would be the total exceeds, so this required a five, so you would have to have, to get a triumph, you have to um, increase it by five or more. And that would add free to the damage. Okay, so that's an interesting point. So if you can play cards enough to give you that increase of five or more on a success, so at this moment you would have plus two because you've got uh, your six, your one over naturally with your card, and you're able to play an additional card which gives you a plus one. So you at the moment, 
You're not at a triumph, but you have hit. Uh, you would add free to damage. The damage total is then decreased by the target's armor. So Porthos's armor. What is Porthos's armor? His armor on this location. I don't think Porthos has got any armor. Because these other characters actually have equipment. Let me just look at the uh, character card. Uh, armor, armor, armor. No, Porthos does not have any armor. Remember, he's just wearing. He's he's just he's just wearing um, cloth, isn't he? Uh, after total damage is calculated, the character being shot receives that many wounds. So in effect, the damage total is decreased by the target on this location. So because you have used hearts, you're doing four damage. Because you can't increase it to a, to a triumph, you're just going to do the basic damage, which is four against Porthos. My goodness. I hope I'm right in doing that. I think I am. I don't think there's anything else. So says the damage equal to the weapon's value at the given location. Location is determined by... So hitting the heart, yeah, is four. It's four damage. There's, there's nothing. So, okay, now that's a three. There's a one. So each character... So these two cards now go in your discard. I'm going to put those... And put those there because that's your discard. Uh, so draw a card whenever there is combat declared involving an enemy. No, okay. So it doesn't affect. Right, so here we go. So, oh, that's, oh no, that's, oh, okay. Doesn't help, doesn't help me. So each character has a value, a crippled value, and then a death value. Once you get over five damage on Porthos, he becomes crippled. And that being the case, he has a minus one on all of his uh, tests, which is not good. Uh, at the moment, you've done four points of damage. Oh, there we go. I think that was correct. He has no armor. The shot that you did is armor piercing. So this has now been fired. So actually, we should take these tokens off because they haven't been fired yet. But this one has. So if you wanted to fire his pistol again, you are going to have to, uh, to reload it. Guess who you're targeting next? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so that is Longinus. He's had his activation. And because you fired a shot, an alarm token is removed. So Longinus has done his go. It's now my turn. Um, I feel like I, I need to go and stab you. <laughs> oh, goodness. So you remember, you've only got one card, one card left, remember? All right, let's, let's try something else. I think I got that right. Shooting is an unopposed test of the appropriate shooting skill
Let me oh, let me just look at the card just for a second, just to see. What's L and M? K. Oh, hang on. Yes, there was no modifier. There was no modifier to his. I'm just check, just checking. Here we go. Because he does have modifiers. So he has a plus two to his great weapon being used, but he has a zero to his, uh, his cavalry pistol. I'm just looking now to see if any... Right, so Porthos has a plus three to his rapier but he's he's not going to be well one two three he could actually get up to the door you see the thing close close combat close combat doesn't isn't part of this this particular sort of phase so if you can get your guys connected is only it's only shots and movement that get done in this phase for the most part uh so this is the action phase yes yeah, so it is it's shooting just uh just look here shooting and movement and leaping and things like that because then we go to combat phase i'm thinking if i move one of my guys up it's going to it's going to block what you're able to do there I don't want Porthos to die, though. <laughs> but I don't think there's any way of me healing him right here and now. Hello, Augie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are playing uh, Anno Domini 1666. Or at least uh, we're certainly learning how to play the game. So you're saying come closer. Yeah, but you see... You've got a, a bloody big sword. You've got like a proper Highlander sword going on here. But we do need to we do need to practice. I don't want poor Foss to die. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move so I'm gonna activate one of my musketeers. He's just gonna go one, two. He's gonna go there. And he's going to engage you. Now the thing is, because of him stood there, this guy can't shoot because you're kind of in the way. But these two guys, they can't get him because it's just the doorway. So we are we're actually blocking, we're blocking your entrance into the tavern. Hopefully, we're giving ourselves a little bit of time. But I'm not quite sure how well he's going to do against him there. All right, over to you guys. What do you want to do? You're choosing violence. So remember you have you have your two heroes over here and you have your two dragoons just there. Do you have a rough idea? If you, if you decide sort of maybe which person you want to activate, I will uh, I will sort of give you suggestions as to what you might be able to do with them. Do we need to draw a card? Uh, you draw cards at the start of the turn. Right? Now, there is a bonus to the Defenders of the Crown. 
that you draw a card when one of your heroes suffers two or more wounds from a single source. Okay, so that's your bonus. I'm actually thinking... I'm actually thinking you didn't probably need to play that four because it didn't take you up to a triumph, did it? It probably wasn't worth playing it. Your six, as it was, was enough. So I'm going to take that four back for you because you, you did everything you could do with that six. It was a, a little bit of a waste. But no, basically all of the characters get activated before you get to draw up two more cards. Unless the condition of one of your heroes loses two or more damage in one round. It's only for the sprinting, yeah. If you guys wanted to actually check out the rules, if, if, if you're intrigued, uh, then it is exclamation BGG. And that will, uh, will give you a link, I think, I hope. If I've got it all correct. There you go. Well, you know, it's it, it you know, many many eyes make light work. So ultimately, and because he is now engaged, even though you've already if you hadn't have used him or activated him, by virtue of my character engaging him, he effectively means he cannot do anything as well, which is an interesting little point. Which makes sense, of course. Uh, your two heroes are on the outside. You have a hero here and a hero here. Uh, you can get into the tavern through these doors but you've got to come around this sort of alleyway area. And let me just double check. You know what? I might actually put a token down so that it, it, I know. So that, we're going to call him Wallow. I'm going to put a purple token next to Wallow and over there so we know that that's him. Can the hero at the back go through the door? So, okay, so he's got four movement. One, two, three, four. He can get up to the door. He cannot open it, though. But Chris is saying bring the top hero down so he can react quicker. Ah, good call. So, one, two, three, four. That hero would get to about here. That's the closest. Is there an exit where at the top where that door is? No, that's a solid wall all the way along here. Solid wall of the tavern. So the only exits are all the way here, all the way down here, down at the bottom here. Uh, this, I, I think this is the privy. Yes, it, it might as well be. Yes, it's a small little room. This looks like a bit of a storeroom. Yeah. So what what are you what are you agreeing on? Are you going to bring this guy down to here, or are you going to bring this guy up to this door? You think bring the top hero down? Do you agree, Roga? You want to you want to f a flip a coin? How about we'll just do it on it? Well, there's no coins and there's no dice. 
So we'll do it on value of card, okay? Here we go. This is Chris's card. Chris, you get an eight. Roger. <laughs> you, you get an eight as well. <laughs> I hope I've shuffled these. I, I, have, I have shuffled them. I have shuffled them. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Right, Chris. Chris, Chris, Chris. You get a seven. Roger, you get... Oh, a joker. A joker and a red joker. A red joker means an instant success. A black joker is an instant fail. Okay. Roger, you got a red joker. So it's up to you. You decide. What do you want to do? Do you want to stick with bringing your guy around? Bob bottoms up. You see, no dice, no coins. I like this game straight away. Move the bottom guy. All right. So that is this guy, whose name I cannot say. And he is moving four, doing a full movement. One, two, three, four. He is at that door. All right. Over to me. Oh, goodness, goodness me. I do want. I do want to know how do you heal. That's actually one thing. It's one thing I do not know. But I suppose in most most miniature games, you tend not to heal, don't you? You uh. You kind of just work along, and then and then. Yeah, oh, no healing, only death. Yes, yes. I just feel, I just feel Porthos just got it, you know, got it quite unfairly right from the right from the start. But you know, a snapshot. I guess that's the kind of thing that needs to be done. Um. I will move. I'm going to move my other musketeer. One, two, three, four. He's there. So I've got two of you. Now, actually, now, can he? I don't think he can. Can he engage? I don't think he can. This is called, like, your zone of control. Oh, hang on. Yes. So only one on one through the door. Diagonals don't work. So he can't. He cannot do that. All right. So, but that's okay. He's there just in case. Oh, oh, Chris, you're already there. So yes, page twenty-five. Okay, only be healed by items or abilities. Right, and that being the case, yeah. So if Porthos takes another hit, we're in trouble. Okay, I've done my musketeer. Over to you guys. What's next? What are you going to do? I think if it, Roger, since you since you managed to uh, to win the first decision, maybe we go over to Chris, um, because these two guys are not doing anything. Well, this guy could do something. In fact, both guys could do something. Depends, it's up to you. Just remember, so just so you're aware, you can climb through windows, but it is a test. Climbing through a window, if you fail it, you could fall prone. You could you fall through the window. <laughs> Oh, is Porthos in range? Can you shoot through a window? 
Ooh. I think you could you could shoot through a window, couldn't you? It would count as an obstacle, yes. So the window is an obstacle and the table is an obstacle. Uh, Porthos is not prone. So you so that would still just be a minus one on your attack. And, oh, and actually, oh yes, but it was still okay. You had to get five or more. You had a minus one on your six, but that still worked, didn't it? So that's fine. So, so yes, your, your dragoon could shoot through that window at Porthos. Oh my goodness. Uh... Yeah. Hang on, if a shot crosses one or two obstacle boundaries, there is a minus one. If a shot would receive two or more terrain penalties... So hang on a second, it's terrain, isn't it? Not obstacle. Let me just... I've uh, just got a look here. Because there is a difference. So that's so. There's no obstacles. I think I don't think you can. Page 19, Windows. Page 19, Windows. They count as an obstacle boundary. Minus one on the shooting test. All right. So are you saying then that... So he would he would have he's got one he can see for he can see this one he can see that one so yes he would still see him and his range is up to seven, so at short, at short range, which is fine. It's a test of uh, a five or more. Are we? You're going to go for it? Oh goodness me! So we're going to. We'll say that this guy is the top guy here. So you're going to use your half musket. So, no matter what, it's going to require a reload. We take the top card from the deck. Oh. <laughs> oh, goodness me. So, so that is an, an eight of hearts. So you've succeeded. You've succeeded. Um... Because the, but there is a is there so what we're saying is it a minus two, so you still got six, so you're over the five, so that's absolutely fine. But adding cards wouldn't bring it up to ten. No, it wouldn't, because you've only got. You've got the suit, not the value. It's the value that will give you a plus two. Uh, the dragoons do not get a bonus in their shooting. No. So in effect, you do another four points of damage because you hit the heart area. 
I want to find out what what's the cup? What area of the body does the cup stand for? <laughs> so so you do yeah, you do another four points. Poor, poor Porthos is is having a hard time. I think Porthos needs to do something before he dies. Um But whatever he does now. Don't add cards, just thump Porthos. Uh, Augie, yes, miniature, miniature games tend to have lots of little rules, but all those little rules just add to the experience. You're able to do so much more. Wait until we get, if, if we get the opportunity to do some fencing. The fencing in this is absolutely brilliant and it feels just like real fencing. Uh, but in card play, which is really awesome. Um, no, 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 we're not doing pew, pew, pew. No, no pew, pew, pews. So, uh, so first of all, we remove because you've done an, you've fired another shot so we take away another alarm those are going to add up real quick aren't they you're you're definitely doing lots to alert the guards aren't you Okay, so that's that done. Porthos is nearly dead. I feel that he needs to do something. He's going to die. He is going to die. Um... He needs to move. He absolutely needs to move. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move Porthos. And go one, two, three, four. We're gonna stick him there, because hopefully <laughs> hopefully nobody can hit him. No, it, he's behind a fireplace. He's behind a fireplace. But looking out the window, he knows you're here. He can see you there. Alright. Your turn. What are you doing now? You've got this guy to do, and you've got this guy to do. Stab Porthos through the window. <laughs> Let's shoot through the window. You can't do that because he, he has already done his activation. This guy, he can go to this window, but he cannot get this guy because he can, he can see this and then he can see these next three. It's like a cone moving outwards. If I'm right in thinking that. Am I right in thinking that? Yeah. Okay. So so he's safe because he's he's stuck behind the window. So really you can either move him and you could move him to climb through the window if you wanted to, or you could bring him around here to climb through this to get onto a table, you know, all very dramatic, very movie like. Or you can move this guy around here. Move the top guy down. So you're moving four. One, two, three. I think four is probably most sensible, isn't it? Okay. So he has done his. And that just leaves uh, D'Artagnan. And what is he going to do?
Now, D'Artagnan, as I say, he he is agile. He can he can do diagonal movement, and he has uh, the value of two diagonal movements. So he's going to go one as a diagonal, two, three as a diagonal. That's his diagonals done. Oh, 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 I've got to be careful, got to be careful. He's going to go there. So that your guy can't shoot him. <laughs> it's just as an ID so we know that because your heroes look quite similar. And... uh I mean, I suppose I, we should have colours for the two dragoons, shouldn't we, as well? So this guy is the last person to move. So D'Artagnan has moved. Uh, I mean, gosh, you even have an extra person. It's just not fair. So what do you want your final dragoon to do? Let me just double check something. How do I put myself? So you're suggesting moving through the window. Uh, I've just realized, have I missed something? Hang on a second. L on this, fencing. I'm just trying to check something for uh... He can't stab anyone. No, he cannot. No. So the best he could do is he could climb through this window. Or he could move around further around here if he felt that that was advantageous. Climb through the window. Okay, so he's going to do a partial. Is that a partial movement? Well, as you know, so, so it's a movement with a, a maneuver. So he's moving his four. And to climb through a window requires two movements with an agility test of four. So he would go one. To move across that window is two, three. So now you do a test of four. His agility, he hasn't got a bonus to it. So it's this card. It's four or more on this card. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he's effortlessly 
he, he's just pirouetted through the, through the um, through the window. Not a problem. Not a problem. And so he has one movement point left. Um, there's not much he can do, really, is there? Because he can't climb... He would have to, to climb up onto that table takes two movement points. So he's just stuck there. But he is he is right next to this musketeer. So effectively, these musketeer this musketeer and him are now engaged in close combat. So these are engaged, these are engaged. D'Artagnan, he is not doing anything, he can't help, nor can Porthos, because he's just got holes all over him. These two guys are not doing anything. Alright? So that is the end of the action phase. Can you, um, if you if you are looking, Chris, uh, ah, you see, it does say full actions. Um, can you sort of do, of see the point where it talks? Oh, fencing. Here we go. Fencing, fencing, fencing. Right. So, I think I'm right in saying, so you get a fencing token if you're good at fencing. Where's the fencing tokens? Not in that one. So D'Artagnan has a fencing token. So does Porthos. These guys don't. He has a fencing token. Oh gosh, he has three. Sorry, I, I forgot this little aspect of the game. It's actually quite important. And I think this piece is definitely weighted towards these uh, these uh, defenders of the crown. They have some serious abilities. Thankfully, he's outside, and your ordinary two guys they don't have any tokens. All right, so everybody gets refreshed. We're still in the first turn of the game. But we now are entering the sort of close combat. So we can't use any of our muskets. We can't do any movement. All we are doing now is engaging whoever we are next to. And it starts with you. Uh, because you have the initiative. So we've rotated all the cameras. Enemy adjacent characters carry out close combat. So in a manner similar to the action phase, players alternate activating their characters to fight enemy characters that they are engaged with. The main difference is that after a close combat, both parties or participants are marked as active no matter which character initiates it. The player who acted first in the action phase also acts first in the combat phase, which you guys go in first. Uh, each character may only be activated once per phase to keep track of which characters have already been activated. Rotate. So, so in effect, you're going to go first. So we're going to tap you there, which ultimately means that my musketeer is activated because we're both in combat. Um, you've got a pretty big, a pretty big sword. You're all, you're all about dealing some damage here. Ah, but at least it's not Porthos. Goodness. Now let me just double check this. So.
So there is not an enemy. Oh, I see. If I'd moved D'Artagnan over to here. See, he, he cannot support him because he's in the way. If D'Artagnan was here, then that would count as two of my guys together. I get a bonus. I get an extra. I'm able to pick up a card because it's all for one and one for all. Um, because if you are diagonal with somebody, then you are able to sort of get involved in the sword play. Right, so we're going to start with you. Okay, here we go. We're going to learn how to do some fencing. So this is this is now an opposed test. So we've been doing mostly unopposed tests. This is opposed. So each player plays one card each from either their deck or their heart hand and then apply modifiers uh, which is the, notably the character's skill or ability so you have i think it's a plus two for you in this yes you've got a plus two modifier right on your on your uh, your skill here so remember you can either take a card from the deck or you can play one of your cards now remember the first card you play determines the hit location i'm going to read out here your sword is you get three damage for hitting the head, two damage for the heart, two damage for the cup, and one damage for the horseshoe. All right. I'm just going to just double check something. Uh, where's a picture of the cart? Why? I'm trying to find a picture that tells me about close combat weapons because there's a, something with two little stars. What do they refer to? Yes, oh yeah, we're doing some fencing orgy, which is something that's actually really cool. Once we get the momentum going, once we've worked this out. I'm trying to sort of see. So the rapiers have two stars and you have three stars on your weapon. But what does that refer to? So, so the mod, mod, model skill, the character with the highest weapon super ah, the character with the highest weapon superiority gains a plus one. That's it. So your weapon has got three stars. My weapon has got two stars. So you have weapon superiority. So you've got you've got plus two for your skill. You've got plus one for your actual weapon. Okay, so you you got to start uh, adding these up. Remember, these are going to modify whatever card you put down. Uh, so character with the highest weapon suit gets plus one. The guy isn't crippled, so there's no minus. He isn't prone. Each friendly character adjacent to the fighting character opponent that isn't engaged by other any models, isn't prone, isn't unconscious, supports the friendly. So he is engaged. He can't support him. So he just gets no bonus. Uh, 
and your guy can't support him because it's going through the door. So if a character has unused fencing tokens, it may flip one or more of them and gains plus one bonus to the combat total for each token flipped. Uh, you do not have a fencing bonus. Because you're not fencing, are you? You're using a great big sword to just whack at people. What's M? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, what do you want to chance? And basically what's going to happen is you're going to reveal a card and then we're going to add all of these bonuses or, mi or minuses uh, to it. And then I'm going to choose a card and I'm going to add all of mine to it. And whoever wins is the person who basically does the damage. And that's the first stage. So what do you want to do? You have two cards that are valued at four each. So you either use a card, you want to draw a card instead. You want to take that gamble. All right. So remember, this card is going to determine the location that your character is trying to have a good old hack at. Here we go. <laughs> Don't be an eight. Don't be an eight. Ah, it's a six. And it is a six of, of the cup, which means that would be two damage, potentially. Let me just double check that leather jacket. Does that do anything? I'm going to have to check what that does in a bit. All right. So you've got a six. You've got a plus two. So you've got eight. What else did we work out? And you've got superiority. So you're up to nine. All right. You are up to nine. Uh, versus rules, okay. Do we have to do, do we do this both at the same time? So each player plays one card from their deck. So I am going to. I am playing an eight. And I have a plus one, which is nine. So we are both, we are both at nine. Then, uh, you may reinforce with cards from your hand. You get a plus one if it's a matching suit, a plus two if it's a matching value. Red Joker has the value of 10. Black Joker has the value of zero. The player with the greater total wins. If there is a tie, the player initiating the test Attempting to use the skill loses. So, what do you want to do? Do you want to use? So you you got nine. I have nine. I don't think there's anything else I can do, is there? I have eight. I have that plus one. I have no fencing ability. You have no fencing ability, thank goodness. So you could use, what's the color of the cards? Okay, these are your cards. So Chris, you're saying reinforce. 
So you're saying to use your four of cups, aren't you? So you take your value up to 10 now. So that's plus one. So use the black four. So you're at 10. I am at nine. Is there anything I can do? And you can continue to play cards to reinforce as much as you like. I unfortunately do not have a card to basically play. <laughs> <laughs> so, resolution. After both players successfully pass on reinforcing, compare the results. If they are equal, the result is a tie. The starting with a player who does not have the initiative, both characters retreat. Okay, but that's not going to happen. When one player's combat total is greater than the other ones, if the losing character has unused fencing totals, it may attempt to parry. But we're not able to do that. So damage, after any and all parries and riposts have been resolved. If the final combat totals are equal, the combat is a tie, there's no winner. Proceed to the retreat trait. Otherwise, the character with the greater final combat total is declared the winner, and the other character, the loser, determine the damage dealt uh, to the losing character. The basic damage of the attack is the difference by which the winner won the test. It is modified by the weapon's damage modifier. Ah, right. So you've got a plus one, you've got plus one and your damage is two for the cups. So you're at three. Uh, damage is decreased by the losing model's armor on the hit location. So... See, I don't read these musketeers as having any uh, any armor. They certainly don't have it as a as an item. What's e e e? Right? No. There's nothing about the actual character. So yeah, you actually have physically have to have the item. So you've done three damage against this guy. All right, done. Uh, okay, so those are discarded. That's discarded. All right. So now it's my turn. And it is my other, so my King's Musketeer against your Dragoon, so it's this guy and this guy. I'm going to put his sword up there so I can see. Got your sword there. All right. So we we just go through the the process again. Uh, ooh, ooh. Now, do I chance it? Do I go for a card from the deck or do I take one from my hand? I'm going to take one from my from my hand. I place that down. What are you going to do? Are you going to play from the deck or from your hand? Your hand is a four. Unfortunately, I'm just swiping at your feet there, which is not much good. From the deck, says Roger. All right, here we go. What is your card? Your card is... It's a five of skulls. Uh, you don't have a fencing bonus. You don't have superiority. I don't have a fencing bonus. I don't have superiority. It is purely on the cards. You cannot reinforce because you do not have the same suit nor do you have the same value and i have no cards to basically add to it 
So it is the difference between the cards plus the location. So uh, it, it is a location. It's free. It is free damage that I do against this guy. Yay! I feel like I'm actually doing something. <laughs> okay. And so we discard that card and we discard that card. And that, that, that's the combat phase. So here we go. When we go on, so everyone's done because nobody else is initiated into combat. So now we go to the morale phase. So any crippled commoners, which would be the foot soldiers, would make a difficulty test against their fortitude of five. Uh, if they're crippled, they have a minus one on all tests. And if they fail, the character just gives up and flees. Oh, oh yeah, you're very close to being crippled. Oh, oh, this is interesting. Uh, so it's removed from the game and uh, it's considered dead. Uh, if the character passes the test, then there's nothing to worry about. All right. So it then goes to the interaction phase. And this is an element that I don't believe we're going to sort of experience in today's game. So we'll skip that. We go to the end of turn. So rotate all of our characters upright. So he can go there and he can go there. I need to find out what, how armor works, how that leather jacket would affect him to being hit. That's one thing that I'm not quite sure on. Uh, that basically then is the end of the first turn. So we lose one of our markers. And now we start again. So at the start of the turn, we both get two cards. I take two cards and you get two cards. All right, what are your two cards? You have a three of skulls and a two of cups. All right, which go along with your four of hearts. Maybe, maybe your good luck to start off with, maybe uh, you're losing it a little bit. Okay, so this is start of a turn. Uh, we pick up cards. Nobody's had an eight no, or a joker. No one's had to discard anything. So... Initiative. Determine initiative. Both players play a card, each from their hand or their deck. The player who had the initiative on the previous turn must announce first whether they are playing from the hand or the deck and reveal the playing card simultaneously. The highest card wins. So you get to choose. Are, you, are we playing a card from the hand or the deck? You're taking a deck, all right. So you get to choose. So here is the deck. You get a seven. I get a, hey, I get an eight. <laughs> so I have the initiative. Rightly so, rightly so. All right. I get the initiative saber. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Uh. Where's the reshuffle bit?
so well th this this is this is good i am going to activate porthos just instantly we're not messing about here porthos is taking a shot with his pistol so so he has we put that onto there. So we deduct a counter because he's taking the shot regardless of whether it hits or not. He has a minus one going through the window. Let's see if we get this all right. So this is, make sure I'm doing it, so unopposed test. So it is a five. He has to get five or more. Uh, which he has a minus one. So he needs to get six or more. And his... He has no pluses on his shooting ability. So, so we play a card. Oh, right, we play a card from the deck, don't we? Oh, oh, goodness. Okay, so here we go. Playing a card. It's a red joker. Wow, okay. The red joker is an automatic triumph. It's a triumph. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Okay. So, hang on, where's the triumph? A triumph, a triumph, a triumph, a triumph, a triumph, a triumph. A jokers cannot be reinforced or to be used as a reinforce. Okay, so let's just work out uh, triumph, triumph, triumph. Where is it? So if you achieve a triumph in the test, add three to the damage. So his damage... Oh, well, well, hang on. So if the test succeeds, the target's hit. The original player's card suit determines the hit location, which in turn determines the basic damage. Now, as, a, as playing a Joker, do I get to choose... I think I get to choose what the hit location is, because the Joker, of course, is of no suit. So I'm, I'm going to say that Porthos is... Because it's a wild card, he's basically going to go for Skulls. So he, he basically just, uh, just shoots you and gets three of Skulls, and then free for the triumph. He gets six damage against you in one shot. Papoom! Yeah, I think I think we're I think we're good with that. That makes sense to me. Jokers are the wild cards, aren't they? So six damage. Oh yes. Um, and this means that. This guy now effectively counts as crippled. He has a minus one against all of his tests. Oh, oh, but actually, but Porthos has a minus one against his tests. Didn't realize that because he is crippled as well. But it doesn't matter. Right? Because a joker just instantly just, he just does it. So that's done there, and and because you are right. So draw a card when a faction hero suffers two or more wounds from a single source. You're quite right. So you get an additional card. Oh my goodness! Look at the amount of cards you've got. You get a black joker. What does a black joker mean? Uh, what happens if you draw up a black... A black joker is a fail. 
So let me just double check. Joker, joker, jokers. I think. Don't need to do any of that. Where's the joker? I think you basically just lose the card. Oh, so if you dis so card phase. Where's the reshuffle? Where's it talk about reshuffles? Um, yes, that, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I think that you just discard that card. In other words, it, it, it counts as misfortune. So you were hoping for fortune, and of course that's not happened, so you would just discard it. But there's something, there's something about triggering a reshuffle when you discard a joker. Yeah, so black and red jokers played on unopposed tests result in automatic failures and a misfortune or to triumph respectively. But there is something about uh, So here you go. Whenever a player discard player's discard pile contains a total of four or more eight value cards. Ah, so here we go. You got an eight. You got an eight. You got two eights. So you're supposed to yeah. I do remember this. You're supposed to put these out, and we'll put the Joker with it. Uh, da 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 da. The cards are then shuffled together. The player then draws as many cards as they had in their hand. So if you draw out another Joker or another eight and put it in your discard, you're gonna you're gonna cause a reshuffle. So basically, however many cards you've got in your hand, you've got to remember that we put all the cards together, shuffle them all up, and then deal you out a new hand. All right. So those stay there. Uh, let's just, oh, so I've got a joker. I've got an eight. I've got two. Oh my goodness. So I'm actually, I'm actually quite similar. Got to remember that. So again, if either of us discard an eight or a joker, we have to then do a reshuffle. So that's worth, uh, you can hang on to it to discard during the card phase. Oh, right. Okay. That's done that. Okay, so Porthos has done has done his shot. Right. Over to you. Right, yes, yeah, so it it might cause the reshuffle, right, exactly, because of course it's going into the discard pile that causes the reshuffle, doesn't it? Yes. All right. Um, I took a, I took a, a marker off, didn't I? Because we've done the shot. Your turn. Sure. Okay, Chris. Thanks for your help. Appreciated. Roger, left guy, go through the window. Left guy, go through the window. Uh, what, you mean this guy? The guy with the marker. Just so you're aware, so he would, 
So he would go through this window. He's into a little storeroom. You'd have to then open up that door, etc. But it is possible. You can do it. Just so, the, just in case you're not quite uh, seeing the board, I'll explain everything. But if you want to do that, then that's absolutely fine. Sneak attack! Sneak attack! All right. No, that's absolutely fine. So his agility... Ah, so he's got an agility of one, which is quite cool. So he's going to move one. To go through the window is two, three. And we now need to do a unopposed test. So we play a card. So you need to get five or more, I think. Let's just double check. Not items. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. So jumping through windows. I like that you can do that. It seems a little bit more uh, heroic. Costs two movement points and requires a test of five or more with agility. Uh, does he have a bonus? He has a bonus, so you've got a plus one on your card. So here we go. Drawing a, a card. You have a seven. So you've got an eight. So you're successful. You don't. Uh, you don't need to worry about it. So that being the case, so that was, it was one, two, three. So it gets you to there. And you could do a diagonal. You could get straight up to the door if you wanted to. And that would be your four movement. Are you happy with that? And uh, we'll put that seven just there. Yes. All right. So up to the door. All doors are considered closed and locked, so we would have to open up those doors uh, in due course, but he has he's done his activation. Uh, Paul Foss has done his I think I think I'm going to move D'Artagnan to there. And that being the case, he's now engaged with that guy as well. So it's now a, it's, it's a two against one. Two against one. Do, 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 do. Um... And hopefully that, that does us better. So he has, he's done his bit. I'm just going to put these like that. That's just easier, isn't it? So he's done his. Uh, over to you. Who do you want to move? I'm just looking here, so... The guy at the back door, can he fire through the window? Uh, as in firing at Porthos, it would count, Porthos would have a plus because he's 
at the window. He's just fired at him, hasn't he? I'm just trying to see. So you'd be firing through a window. I don't think you can because you're not up against the window. You would have to move towards it. In fact, no, you can't because you can't fire your one away from the window. He's up against the window. So he's poking his gun through the window, but you would have to be up against it to be able to poke through. So he could be slightly hidden behind it. So no, unfortunately you can't. I think the only thing that um, you could open the door, we could look at uh, we could look at doing that, but it's a case of is that door locked? Let's. Uh, what's the scenario say? So it says that one is an open door, but it doesn't say whether the other doors are locked. So the top right guy, can he go through the window? Yes, he could do. Yes. We just do have to do a test for that. But yes, that's an option. So again, it would cost you two, two points. Let's do that. All right, we're going to keep things sort of easy. So, so it's this this guy, isn't it? He is the top guy. So he is attempting to go through this window. He has to do an unopposed test. So it is he has no pluses to his agility. It is the card value. He needs five or more. <laughs> He's got a five. So that's okay. So he goes through the window. So that's two points that he's used there. Um, again, you're stuck by the table. You would have to climb over the table. So you can't really do that. So what this means, of course, is that your two guys are engaged with uh, that musketeer. Oh, my goodness. There's going to be a lot of hacking and slashing going on here now, isn't there? Um, my guys, I've done Porthos, I've done Aramis. Now, I'm going to leave my two musketeers where they're at. They can't fire their pistols because they are effectively engaged in close combat. So ultimately, those two guys are done. And really, it's only this guy left as far as who can do something. Because unless you want to move Longinus out of the way. So you've got Longinus and you've got this guy. This guy could try and hop over the table. Can you? Because he, he effectively is retreating, isn't he? He's breaking. Let's uh, let's just double check. Can the bottom left guy move up and fire? As in him. Well, bot bottom left, you mean this guy? He can't move. He can. He can either move. Well, I, oh, actually, actually, no. Hang on, you're right. Hang on, hang on. You could do a partial action, so you could do a partial movement, and then you could do a quick shot, and you can do. Two, you can do two. Yes, you're quite right. So you want to fire at Porthos, don't you? Yes. 
Because that's just the type of mean person you are. <laughs> so, if that's right, which I'm sure it is, so the movement is fine, and then it's just going to be ranged combat. You're going to have a minus two because you're going to be firing through a window and you're doing a quick shot. And what weapon does he have? Ah, no. No, he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a firearm. So no, you can't do it. He, he doesn't have a musket. He has a cutlass. Uh, sorry, a, is it, what, what do they call it? He has armor he has, and a saber. He has two pieces of armor to him. He's going to open the door. All right, okay. So opening a door. Now... Yeah. How do we... Uh, da, 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 da. Where's opening a door? It's either just going to be... It doesn't say if it's locked. So I'm going to, I'm going to, so it basically it just costs you a movement point. So so you you can move four. So opening the door would be one, and then you can move an additional three. So where where do you want to go? Straight ahead, so, so that's one, two, three, and you can do one more movement. Up oh, one, yeah, I thought so. Four, that's it, done. Okay, Every, everybody has has activated so let's turn that turn that okay there's going to be some 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 serious deaths happening now <laughs> let's see if we can do this so So I thankfully have the initiative. Uh, so, so this is really interesting. So if D'Artagnan, ah, right. If he attacks him, then this guy is act is considered activated, which would leave D'Artagnan to be able to defend against him if need be, which of course is gonna is gonna be the case, isn't it? Because if D'Artagnan attacks him, D'Artagnan would be activated, meaning he would be kind of defenseless against that guy. Or, or does it work that way? I don't think it does actually because uh, 
Uh, ah, who who got who got damaged from a sword? It was this guy got damaged, didn't he? He could have retreated, but I just obviously decided not. Oh, it must retreat, must retreat. Ah, this guy should have retreated. He should have moved over here. So when you when you take damage, it moves you. Okay, we'll 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 remember that. So if you take damage, if you lose the battle, this little battle, then you must move back out of the way. Uh, but it must be there's a certain rules. So like this guy, he could only move back here. You can't move retreat over the table. But you've got to just move one space away to give space. So I'm going to have this guy attack this guy. Oh no, actually it was this guy it was this guy who took the damage, wasn't it? It was him. Because he took it from Longinus hitting him. So let's do this one. He is going to attack this dragoon. So it's still that guy, isn't it? All right. So this is uh, this is close combat. So it's an opposed test. There's the opposed test. Each player plays one card, either from their deck or their hand. Ah, uh, I have a Walloon sword, and I have a plus one to it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna chance it. So I'm playing a six. I have plus one, so that makes it seven. What do you want to play? Do you want to play one of the cards from your hand, or do you want to go blind from your deck? Oh, and oh, but before I do that, oops, before, because I am engaged now two against one, all for one and one for all, I get to draw another card. All right, so what do you want to do on your hand or your deck? I think the hand, do I have an eight or higher? You do not have an eight or higher. Your 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 hand is not as strong as it was in the first round. Okay. A draw then. All right. All right, here we go then. So you want, you need seven or more to win this. Here we go. Ooh, ooh, it's a three. Ooh, ooh. Now, so can you reinforce? So you could add, oh, so you can't reinforce. Oh, oh, but you could, you could. Matching value. You could play, so you've got three at the moment. You could play your three of skulls that would take you up to a five. So this is this is trying to mitigate the amount of damage I do. So that would take you up to five. Remember, I am at a seven. So that would mean it would be two points. It would be... So at the moment, I'm, I'm doing two points of damage. Uh, uh, hang on, hang on. 
I do I do two. Let's just make sure I guess right. You don't have any armor. So at this moment in time, let's just get this right. I'm at seven, you're at three. I would be doing at this moment in time six points of damage against you. If you play your three, I'm doing four points of damage against you. You're going to put the three there, yeah. All right, so you're going to play your three. So that's down to four points of damage. Uh, there's no, there's no card that I can play to reinforce. So we're just going to leave it at that. That's four points of damage. Put those there. Put that there. Get four points. Oh, this poor guy. Uh, this poor guy is... Oh, oh! Oh, actually... Because you're crippled, it's minus one. It's minus one. So in fact, oh, I'm I'm sorry, you're dead. So I'm not doing four. I'm doing actually doing five points of damage against you. So it's up to you now. Actually, did you want to use that three? Because you're going to die kind of no matter what so maybe you wouldn't want to waste that card hold on to the three yeah okay so this guy first casualty he is he's gone and there's nothing to keep hold of, we'll move those over there. It means there's a death, so we use a token there, and you kept the three. All right. Ooh, okay. All right. Uh, that's done. It's over to you now. So, what do you want to do? Do you want to attack with this guy attacking D'Artagnan? Do you want to attack with this guy attacking this musketeer? Or do you want to attack with this guy attacking this musketeer? The one outside the door attack. So you're talking Longinus, aren't you? So let's move that there. And he is up against he's up against this guy, which yeah, he's gonna die, isn't he? <laughs> right, so each player plays one card from their deck or their hand. Uh you've got a three, a four, a two, and a joker. So what do you want to do? Do you want to play any of those hand cards or do you want to go for blind from your deck you want to draw from the deck yes just going to make sure it is deck Probably worth the gamble, isn't it? But there again, it depends. You don't you don't know what cards I have. Maybe I've got rubbish cards. I like that. I like this aspect of the game. You know, it, it, it's it's you know, put your poker faces on. Do you have good cards in your hand? 
True, but the deck. All right, so going blind from the deck, you get a two. You're going for the legs again. <laughs> um, so you're going to do one point of damage now. So you've got a two, plus you have a bonus of two, so you're at four. And you have a matching value. You could play a reinforcement card. So you've got a plus two in in your in your uh, in your hand. Uh, okay, but I'm going to play. I'm gonna play an eight. Uh, good morning, Chris. So you're going to play your card, which is your two. So that goes there. Because, yes, you want to minimise the amount of damage now, don't you? Um, so let's just make sure I got this right. So that is it's two plus another two. That's four. Plus your skill is six. Oh, and you have you have superiority, which is seven. So you're doing seven. I'm putting down an eight. You know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it. I'm going to put down the card. So I've got nine. So I'm at nine, you're, what do we, did I say you're at seven? Two, four, six, plus one, seven, seven, nine. So that, that, so I, I'm ahead. Do you have support from the top guy? Remember your seven, remember my nine, if you would. Let's just see, here we go. Uh... Ooh. Right. Oh, 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 interesting. Interesting. Right. So there is, yes, there's a little bit here. So. You get a plus one. Close combat. Yeah, you get a plus one from, from him. So that's two, four, six, seven. Hang on, hang on. Two, four, five, six, seven. With him, that's eight. So you get a total of eight. Right, and I am at eight plus one nine. Okay, so you've man you've managed to reduce the uh, the margin, but you're right. Yes, you do get an extra one from him. If you had another guy over here, you'd get a plus three. I think is that right? Support a friendly character engaged with the enemy and no other enemy figures grants plus one or plus two if the enemy is surrounded. And surrounded basically means a guy sort of opposite on the other side. If you're engaged here, it's somebody else on the other side. All right. Um, so it does mean it does mean that effectively 
you've lost that combat. But the margin, so what do we say? It's it's one point difference, isn't it? So it's one point plus it was a heart, so that is another point. So that's two points of of damage against you. Hello, is that Ivelia? Hopefully I'm saying that right. Welcome. Welcome, how are you? Oh, now, hang on, so that's two points of damage, but you have, you have a leather jacket on. And it's up against the heart. I'm gonna to have to see how this works out. Where's it, where's it? Hang on, it's gonna be items, let's see. Let's see. How do items change items? So my weapon doesn't have armor piercing. So here we go, armor. Right, okay. So that is quite simple. So basically the armor works, there are two there are two values. Uh in this instance, because I'm using an ordinary sword, I just use the first instance. So you l I don't get to do one less damage. Simple as that. So take that one away. And you get one a <coughs> excuse me. Oh, trying to talk and sneeze at the same time is not good. Okay. <coughs> and again. Um, right. That's you done. And so both of my musketeers have been done. I'm going to... Right, let's see let's see if we can if we can do something fancy here. I am engaging this guy. So that's there, that's there. Okay. Oh, this is gonna this I don't know if this is gonna work out. <laughs> so so oh, oh, ah ah so I'm now discarding an eight which now means that I have four eights or jokers. It causes a reshuffle. Oh, lucky you. So all those cards get put into the deck. And let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Reshuffle, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Reshuffling. Uh, The player takes note of how many cards he or she hands. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's only me. So it's only it's only the player whose cards. Um, so I'm just going to shuffle all these up. So this would be a good way if you if you can draw, if you draw another eight or a joker. then you'd be able to reshuffle your cards and maybe get some better values. All right, so that's that done. Those cards go into your discard, done. So it is D'Artagnan against uh, Wolo. That's what we're calling him. And so this is an opposed test. I am going to draw a card from the deck. I draw a six. 
I'm going for the legs. And I have a plus three to this. So I'm at nine. And my, we've got no superiority on the weapon. You have a plus three as well on your sword. What, what card are you taking a card from your hand? I think uh, draw a card from the deck. All right. So basically, if it's greater than six, you're good. Here we go. Ooh, it's a four. Ooh, ooh. But you can add plus two because you have a four. You have a four of hearts. I'm assuming you want to play that card. Yes, let's do it, okay. Thing is, of course, it means you're whittling down your cards. So maybe for the next turn, you don't have as many cards, but there we go. So you are at six plus your three is nine. I am at six plus my three is nine. It is a tie. Let's just, uh, just double check here. So, unfortunately, you've not got any additional cards to play to reinforce. And I have no cards to reinforce. So, if the both players successfully pass, yes. If they are equal, the result is a tie and no damage is dealt. Starting with a player who does not have the initiative, both characters retreat as explained below. So, you've got a retreat from me and I've got a retreat from you. So starting with, what was it saying? Starting with the player who does not. So you've got to retreat. You've got to take one space away from me. So we discard those. Discard that. Hello, Baron. Yes, one on the red team is dead. Uh, Porthos on, on the blue team is very close to dying. Very close. But he did do an amazing shot through the window. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Hang on! Hang on! Hang on! My mistake! Hang on! Put the cards back! Put the cards back! Put the cards back. We said that I was at nine. You were at nine. But I forgot, and literally just, just re uh, reminded me, your guy is considered crippled. So you're minus one. So mine is nine against eight. So that being the case, I'm afraid I, I have won this round. So, but this is interesting. This is interesting. So, if the losing character has unused fencing tokens, they may flip over to do to attempt a parry. So you could do it. So you do have a fencing token. You could try and do a parry. Uh, which is an unopposed test with a difficulty of six. Now, this is, this is what, what I think is quite cool. Uh, this guy is not the best. Your other guy, he's, he's a master swordsman. So basically, you could keep on flipping cards and doing pa parries for as many parry tokens. So you're constantly trying to negate the damage that's coming at you, which is very, very evocative of, of real fencing. So you're going to flip your parry token. 
So you have one chance at this. Uh, it's an unopposed test with a difficulty of six. But it does not add any ability or weapon skill. So you reinforce this knob. So at this moment in time, so we've got to remember, I am doing... So what was that? I was at nine. You were at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you were eight. I'm at, so there's a plus one to me on damage at this moment. So we've got to remember that. So here we go. This is you doing a parry. Uh, you've got to get over six. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you lucky, lucky man. <laughs> okay, so you have parried. Uh, if the test fails, proceed to determine the damage. I failed, okay. If the test succeeds, the attack is parried. Discard all cards involved in the test and carry out a ripost by repeating all steps of the close combat test. Repose may be, uh, uh, may be parried normally if the losing character... So, so what happens is this gets discarded. You've parried that attack, right? And now we do the attack again. And it carries on. Now, the thing is, of course, that if you um, were defeated, you do not have a parry token, so you can't use that to your advantage. Oh my goodness, right. So, 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 so. I'm just right there. Number of parries and riposts uh, during a fight is only limited by the availability of uh, available fencing tokens. If a parry attempt was successful, a ripost is mandatory. All right. So... I've, we've got to go through it again. Um, I will draw up a card. Oh! A two. A two. Um, it's up to you. You you have, obviously, a, a three in, in your... So I'm, I'm at two. I'm at five. I'm at five. And I ooh, yeah. I could use my I could use my parry token. That would give me six. Do I want to? Do I want to? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna so so parry tokens. Parry tokens can also be used to give you an extra one. So I'm going to use my parry token to give me a six. You want to draw from the deck. Remember, at this moment, so at this moment, you have you have a three. You have a a free card there. So in fact, actually, I'm five. I'm at six. Is that right? So you could play the three, but that means you've literally got no cards left. So anything you'll be doing is, is playing from the deck. So you would have a 6-2, yes. Yes, it would mean that we were even, which would mean then that we basically just both retreat. You're going to draw the deck. Because yes, because ultimately, if you get more than a six, then you effectively win. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's a four. Oh, but that's okay. Hang on, a four. Four plus your three. That's seven. Oh, oh. So you win. You win. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 and you're going for a skull 
So you're one over me. So that's a three. That's two, two plus one is three. Minus one is six. Yeah, minus, minus one is six, isn't it? Yes. Yes, yes, because you are hurt. So it just means it's a draw then, yes? I think that's right. You got a four. You're up to seven. You're minus one because you're crippled. So it's a six. I'm at two. I had a three, so I'm at five. I use my parry token, so that's six. Six each. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Matching suit, matching suit. You can play your last card, because you, you still have a joker, but it's a black joker, which is no good. You would go, both of us at six, you could take that up to a seven. So yes, you, you would win this. Oh, there we go. So you win the combat. Oh, oh, feel the pain. Poor D'Artagnan. So uh, what was that? It was a skull. It was a skull. That's two points of damage, and I've got nothing to negate it with. Um, it is worth pointing out the all of these uh, these cards. Um, a lot of the uh, characters have special abilities to them. So, for example, the dragoon has quick reload. Uh, D'Artagnan has wits and frenzied attack and clever defense. That is all part of the book. And of course, you know, if you sit down and you learn all of those aspects, we could be putting these into play. I'm just going to go through and we're just playing the basic bones of the game here just to get a feel of it. Uh, and it's enough to sort of keep all the working parts moving along. So, but there are extra elements to the game. So, he's been done. Those have been done. Those have been done. I think that is the end. That's the end of the round. All right. So we would then take that, put that there. We would bring all of these back. Uh, what's the time? Wow, okay, so we're coming up to near three hours, so I think probably that is a good place to uh, to bring it to an end. Uh, which kind of it still it sort of leaves it leaves it uh, in a, a precarious position. It's like who would actually win? Porthos is close to dying. So's a musketeer. One of your guys is very close. One of your heroes is very close to dying. So. Hmm. Yeah. I might take a photograph and we, we could always, uh, we could always recreate the game and continue uh, where we are at. You really like the fencing aspect? Yes. I just thought that D'Artagnan would actually have more uh, tokens to his fencing. I thought he would have been rather good. Uh, what's Porthos? Yeah, Porthos has one. D'Artagnan has one. Granted, this guy, Wallo, he, he apparently is, was a sword fencing master. So so maybe three tokens for him. Maybe you, I'm glad that he's stuck in this storeroom because if he was out on the board, I think there'd be real problems.
So you're both both saying yes, we should photograph it and we could carry on at another time. Okay, and that of course gives me opportunity to read up more in the rules, and of course for you guys to read the rules as well, because you know it's always good if everybody understands. So exclamation B G G, that is a link then to where the rules are. You can download those, read them at your leisure. Uh, maybe then there are uh, aspects that you can. Uh, take advantage of in the next time we play. I really enjoy it. I, I I really do like the game. I think it's really cool. As as you recognize, I think that the fencing and the sword play is very good. I love the cards. Dice rolling's all well and good, but I think the the sort of, you know, that sort of poker gambling element of drawing up the card and oh oh do you take it from your hand where you know you've got a low value but maybe that low value is what you all you need because the other person has no cards <laughs> you know it, oh it's great really really like that very thematic this was a lot of fun you like the card aspect too awesome awesome stuff right yes ooh 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 so don't to worry about those. That's the discard pile. That is in hand. That's your discard. Two eights. That's in your hand. That's your deck. All right. I'll tidy this up. I'll take a photograph and uh, you know, we'll we'll leave it a couple of weeks because we've got other games to play. But we'll come back to it and uh, and we'll give it a go. We'll get, we'll get to a conclusion. Awesome. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Roger. Thank you, Chat, for uh, for taking part and playing. I'm glad that you uh, you enjoyed. Uh, of course, the Kickstarter for the game and its expansion is uh, still running i think it might be we're literally within its last one or two days now so it's exclamation uh k s underscore is it a d sixteen six six i'm sure that probably will give you the link uh where you're able to get the core game and uh, the expansion worth uh, worth checking out there we go All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for your company. Look forward to seeing you on Monday evening. Uh, but until then, bye for now.